Hello. Um, thank you very much for having me. Uh, thank you for coming to my talk after lunch when you probably could be taking a nap or something like that. Um, <clears throat> uh, my talk is, so you're thinking about using Ember. Is there an echo? A double mic. Um, so you're thinking about using Ember is a talk about uh, the, the trade-offs that you get with Ember as well as the benefits. Um, and will basically help decide whether or not, you know, if you're going to have a new project soon, uh, whether or not Ember uh, will suit your needs, not only for you, but also for your team. Uh, just a little bit about myself. Uh, Alex mentioned this. Uh, we work together on YepNope. Um, don't use it anymore. Uh, but it was popular back then. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, but then shortly after uh, the asynchronous module definition came out, and we are like, oh, yeah, just do that. Um, I also run this service called Send a Dropbox. Um, basically, lets you email files to Dropbox. Uh, it was written all in Node. It was a lot of fun. And uh, uh, yeah, I keep that going. And uh, professionally, I work for Twitter. Uh, I'm remote from Wisconsin, so visit the office a few times a year, uh, but most of the time just sit uh, at home working. Um, and I'm also, more specifically, I'm on the ads team. Hold your applause. <laughs> I know. Uh, we'll just move on. Uh, <clears throat> uh, before, before going to Twitter, however, um, just to give a little bit of background, I, worked for a company called Bitovi, which was formerly Jupyter JavaScript, if you remember. Um, and they did uh, JavaScript MVC. Um, I was the, the tech lead on CanJS. Um, and then at work uh, on the ads team, uh, we primarily use uh, Backbone, and now we're slowly transitioning over to Flight, uh, where it makes sense. So this is kind of my MVC history at this point. And then, of course, Ember. Um, Ember, I've done more personal projects with just to uh, learn and get better. Um, and it's, uh, it's, very, it's fantastic. It's by far my favorite framework, um, given some caveats. So that, that's what I'm going to go over. Uh, one thing to note is Twitter doesn't use Ember at all. Um, we just haven't had a, had a use case that it fits. Vine, however, which we own, uses Ember, but they kind of act like their own company still. Even though we pay their salaries, they're still a little separate. Um, but but their, their web profiles are uh, Ember is an Ember app. Um, so you can check that out sometime. But uh, let's, let's get to it. So things you should know about Ember before you uh, jump in. Uh, I got three main points. The first being uh, your server has to be an API, right? Um, <clears throat> this is often called the thin server architecture. Uh, you're going to have a server or maybe just a, a static HTML page that renders an empty body uh, tag, and your Ember app will do the rest from there. Um, so n you really have to decouple your back end from your front end. Um, sir, that's awesome. Uh, serve, uh, just serve it like a JSON API and let uh, Ember handle the rest. So. There's trade-offs for that, right? So you can almost keep your server in one repo and your client in, an, in another. Um, if your team's comfortable with that, great. Um, and another thing to, to keep in mind is that you need uh, developers who are extremely comfortable on the front end as well. Uh, but if you have both of those, you can make uh, a much more responsive app than you know, you'd have in a Rails app, for example. Um, uh, so yeah, you'll, have, you'll just have Ember data grab all your uh, uh, data from uh, the server. And you can kind of uh, develop both sides of your application independently, which is, I think is pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> so uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. The second thing is that Ember is a route-first framework. And um, if you're wondering what that means, uh, I can answer that question with another question which is, what is an MVC framework without a router? Um, and my answer to that is a glorified widget maker, more or less. 
right? So these are what you'd call uh, router optional frameworks, or what I'm calling router optional frameworks. Um, Flight doesn't have a router. CanJS, Backbone, Angular, they have them, but you can get away without using them, right? Uh, Ember, however, the router is required. You can't do much of anything at all in Ember without first setting up your router. <clears throat> so what, uh, one thing to, to keep in mind with Ember is that uh, your routes define most of your application, right? So if you have myapp.com and you hit myapp.com slash foo, it's going to look for the foo route. The foo route is going to initialize the foo controller, and the foo controller is going to render the foo uh, handlebars template. And uh, you know, contrast this with something like Backbone, where you're going to have to have an initialize function, and then you're going to have to have a render function, which then takes you know, this dot element and dot HTML, you know, the, and then render the HTML from your template. As long as you name things correctly in Ember, all of that goes away. Just does it for you, uh, which is fantastic. Um, and you'll see there, uh, the, really the only thing you need to get something on the page is a route and a template. Uh, if you didn't define a foo controller, that's fine. Ember will just give you a default one, and we'll go from there. So. Uh, that's the other great thing about Ember is uh, any, if anything along the stack of rendering doesn't exist, it will just use a, a default one. Um, and, and this is very important. Um, I don't know if you've seen the talk by this handsome young buck, uh, Tom Dale. Um, it's called Stop Breaking the Web. Um, it's, he's pretty much been giving it for the last year and a half. Uh, but if you haven't seen it, I would recommend it. You, you should check it out. It, Basically, the, the gist of the talk is URLs should be portable, right? They're the UI of the web. You should be able to copy it out of your address bar, send it over to someone else, and they should be able to see exactly what you're seeing. Um, and stated a different way, if you refresh your page, the state shouldn't change. Your, pay, your app should look exactly the same, whether or not um, a modal is open or closed. Uh, that should all be captured in the URL. So. Uh, that's one of the things that Ember helps with very, um, Ember's router helps do that very easily. So this is, a, this is an example of uh, setting up some uh, routing in Ember. We create the app, and then we tell the app's router um, the things that uh, will be valid routes. So we have a posts route and a uh, about route. Um, and you'll see the difference there. So there's the, the posts, are a, a resource, and uh, the about page is a route. And you can kind of think of that as um, routes are like the leaves of your uh, routing tree, like things end there, whereas posts is a resource, um, kind of similar to Rails, where uh, you may have things underneath it where you know post slash one gets you the post with ID one, et cetera. And then to create a custom uh, behavior for those routes, uh, you do app.postroute and app.aboutroute. Uh, and just by the virtue of naming those things correctly, Ember will hook it all up for you, which I think is really cool. Um, similarly, if you uh, visit something or a route that isn't defined, um, it'll tell you about it, and it'll yell at you, say, hey, uh, privacy policy did not match anything in your application. So you can't get away with um, faking it. Everything has to be a route first, and then goes down from there. Uh, and this is what Ember calls convention over configuration. Uh, if you look at the Ember Getting Started Guide or, or their docs, they'll mention this quite a lot. Um, but it basically means this. Uh, this table sums it up uh, the best. So let's take the, the last example there. If the URL is faves, the route not, name might be favorites favorites controller, favorites route, favorites template. Um, you can customize the URL based for each route, but um, more or less naming things is one of the uh, most important parts of getting your Ember app up and running. And uh, so the third, third big point before you should jump into Ember is that you should know that Ember defines its own object model. So what does that mean? 
So uh, in plain JavaScript, if you want an array, you know, you all know the literal syntax, uh, same for an object. However, Ember has pretty much its own class for anything that you'll need to do. So if you want uh, to use an array, you'll create an array controller and you'll pass the content in. Uh, similar with an object, um, you create an ember.object and, and pass the uh, object literal in there. And what that allows Ember to do is to do things like uh, data binding, observables, and uh, computed properties, uh, which makes you know, automatically updating your templates when, th when data changes, uh, handles all that very well. Um, so how many, how many classes are there? Uh, this is, these are from the Ember docs. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of classes. Um, however, you don't have to learn it all on day one. Like, if you go over to the API in Ember and you see all those classes and you're like, thanks but no thanks, uh, what it comes down to is you don't need to know everything out of the box to get, to get up and running with Ember. You can get away with uh, Ember objects and Ember array controllers uh, to do pretty much everything. And then you know, as uh, things become maybe less tenable, you can dive into things like um, Ember State Manager, right? If you're having a problem uh, keeping track of your state, um, Ember has a state manager that, that can help you with that. Or uh, if you want to hook up different objects together, but observables aren't doing it for you, you can use an object proxy. And um, I guess what my point here is that, uh, like I said, you don't have to have the entire breadth of the uh, Ember API up in your head at all times. Uh, just get started and, and use it where you need it. So just a couple of things to recap. Basically, what I'm saying is that you need to be ready to go all in on JavaScript uh, if you're making an Ember app. Uh, one thing that we do typically on uh, the ads team at Twitter is we'll render a page with Rails, and then the page will you know, uh, render a bunch of DOM element elements, maybe a few inputs, and then we'll uh, initialize backbone views or flight components um, on the the DOM that was generated by Rails. Uh, you can't do that with Ember. You can't uh, have the server throw some HTML up and then try to add some sugar with JavaScript. Uh, it's, it's all or nothing. So uh, if you're thinking about Ember, you need to go all in with JavaScript, um, with routing, single page app. Uh, yeah, uh, be ready to decouple your server from your client and be ready to adopt the Ember ob object model, even though you may not know everything in it right away. Um, which kind of brings me to the final point is that if you're going to use, uh, use Ember on a project with a team, everyone's gonna need to be comfortable with JavaScript, right? Um, <clears throat> the thing about Twitter is that if you know about our stack, we're a Rails company, right? Or we started a, at a Rails company at, at least. Uh, slowly moving to a Rails slash Scala company, but um, Rails is definitely embedded into the culture at Twitter. Um, so if we were to go and say, oh, uh, we're gonna do everything in Ember now, go find a new job, like, it, you know, we can't just let go of, of all the Rails uh, devs that we have. So that's where something like Flight makes more sense, right? If you're familiar with Flight, it's used on Twitter.com. And uh, the way it works is Rails will you know, generate most of Twitter.com and then we'll initialize little flights, flight components um, to do things like handle favorites, handle replying, um, you know, the, the JavaScript UI uh, stuff. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically how I, I view Ember differs from other MVC clients is that you have to go all in Route, routing is not optional. You, you need routes, and uh, your, your team needs to be comfortable. So uh, with that, we'll get into some de development tips. Um, the very first thing you should do if you start an Ember app is get the Ember Inspector. Um, it's fantastic. It lets you see everything that's going on with your data, what route you have. Um, you can hover over your views, much like you can hover over things with the uh, uh, 
Chrome Inspector and see what, what views are being rendered. Um, and they make it for both, uh, it's available for both Chrome and Firefox, so um, pick your flavor of dev tools and, and you're good to go. Um, the second thing I would recommend uh, for during development is Grunt Live Reload. So you've probably heard this a few times, Grunt Live Reload is it's pretty great. Uh, anytime you make a change, the page refreshes. And this is particularly uh, great for Ember apps because if Grunt Live Reload reloads your page and things don't look the same as they did before, you're doing something wrong, right? Um, your page should look the same every time it refreshes. I mean, aside from like maybe the text and an input is now cleared. Uh, but more or less, uh, it's a great way to, if, if you have to uh, edit a file and then go to your page and click on things to get your page in the state where you want it, um, it's, a, it's a sign that you're doing it wrong. And uh, Grunt Live Reload is great for that. Uh, there's also some very helpful runtime flags that you can uh, include. So when you create your application, um, you can pass these in. Uh, log transitions and log bindings, set those equal to true. Those are super, super helpful, so you can, uh, you get this out, nice output in the dev tools of, of where you're transitioning as you uh, route through your app and uh, Uh, gives you a good idea of, of, you know, especially with nested routes, uh, where things are being are being rendered. And then this this is a, a great tool um, by the guys at Simple Labs. Um, they have a, a module called Ember.SimpleAuth. Uh, it imp implements OAuth and bearer tokens for you. Uh, this is super awesome. So it gives you um, a, a session object that you can pretty much access everywhere, whether it's in your templates, in your routes, in your controllers. Um, and you can just check, you know, is authenticated and uh, render your page based on that. So this is something I pulled out of my app. Um, we just have a uh, nav, you know, simple list nav. And you can do things like, you know, if the user's authenticated, you know, hey, welcome. Um, otherwise, log in. So if you're thinking of an app that's going to need uh, authentication, log handle users, like you know, current users, uh, check, check out Simple Auth. Uh, it's, it's very awesome. Um, OK, and then I'll just wrap up a little bit with some production tips. Uh, this may seem uh, obvious, but I've seen enough sites out there that don't actually do this don't actually ship with the production version of uh, Ember uh, when they build. Um, it's not the biggest deal. It's just uh, there's a bunch. If you ever look at the Ember, Ember source, there's assertions everywhere, which is one of the, the great parts of Ember, is that they write assertions right into their app or into the framework. So if you're passing the wrong kind of data somewhere or if you pass uh, you know, the wrong kind of argument to a function, um, almost everywhere it's checked to make sure that, you know, oh, I expected an array controller here and I, and I got something else, or I expected uh, an object here and I got something else. Um, there's assertions everywhere, which is very helpful for development because it'll tell you exactly what you did wrong. However, you don't need to ship uh, your app with uh, hundreds of strings of assertions, right? Uh, so you can cut down your file size. This is how I typically do it. Um, I use require, and uh, my main config file has the development versions defined. And then uh, with require, if you optimize with a second paths uh, object literal, it'll basically call jQuery extend. Like, it'll merge uh, one on top of the other. So my Ember paths will be production when it's built and um, development when I'm in development. Uh, also, a good thing to do in, when you're going to production with an Ember app is uh, catch all the errors. And there's quite a few um, different places. So uh, this is a boiled down version of, of what I have in one of my apps. Uh, every time there's an error, I want the stack. And I want it posted to uh, my report error endpoint, right? So um, anytime there's a, a critical error in Ember, um, on error gets called, much, much like window.onerror. Um, Ember dot 
on air, you can s assign that to a function. What's also very cool is if you're familiar with promises, um, Ember uses them heavily in both Ember and Ember data. And you can kind of assign a global fail handler um, for all your promises. Uh, so that's great, not only because uh, you can get an idea of when um, things go wrong, but you can kind of do a generic, oh, maybe I don't want to define a fail handler every time. Let's do something generic for all of them and then override them where we need them. And then finally, you can um, also uh, get hooks for uh, routing errors as well. So let's say you ship your app to production and um, all of a sudden you get a bunch of errors saying, oh, a, pe a bunch of people are hitting a route that doesn't exist. Uh, you know, figure out why it's going on. So you can figure out uh, if users are you know, not getting a good experience because they're hitting a, a busted route or something like that. Um, this one is, is pretty cool as well. Uh, this uh, reopens your router and allows you to uh, check for uh, transitions when you're transitioning from one route to another. Um, so this is a Google Analytics uh, uh, example. Every time you go from run, one route to another, just like you would in, in a Rails app or a, a traditional app, um, send, you can send a, a page view track of the, the location path name. Uh, so this basically gets you um, Google Analytics normal behavior uh, in your Ember app. Or, you know, you could polyfill this with whatever you want for if, if you don't use Google Analytics or you have a different um, provider, but uh, this has been very helpful as well. Um, one more tip for going to production is that uh, Ember doesn't actually use all of jQuery, right? Um, you can actually get away with killing most of jQuery. Um, so to back up, Ember has two dependencies, jQuery and handlebars. Um, but really, all Ember uses jQuery for is uh, DOM manipulation, more or less, putting views where they're supposed to be, um, re-rendering views, that kind of thing. Um, if you don't need Ajax, I can't imagine you wouldn't, but uh, you can get rid of Ajax. Uh, I personally like to do animations with uh, CSS transitions these days, so I get rid of uh, effects, dimensions, offset, all that, all that stuff. Um, if you can go IE9 and higher, you can get rid of sizzle. And that puts jQuery at like 14 kilobytes after, after gzip, uh, which is pretty good, right? Because uh, Ember plus handlebars plus jQuery um, ends up being about 100 kilobytes. So before you start writing your app, you're already in 100 kilobytes. So this is helpful. Um, and there's a cool, uh, so, so the grunt, grunt command line uh, will do that for you if you have the, the jQuery builder grunt task installed. Uh, but there's also an online service that'll do it for you, like, unless you select your version and deselect your packages and whatnot. Um, so with that, uh, I'd just like to recap that uh, Ember is a fantastic framework. I think it gives you the best of, of the web with single page apps, responsiveness, um, super fast websites. However, you need to know what you're getting into, right? Um, you can't pitch this uh, to your Rails company or to um, a, a bunch of generalist coworkers and, and think that um, there aren't gonna be issues, right? So if you can make the stars align with uh, super good uh, JavaScript developers as well as a, a server client uh, decoupling of your app, um, I think Ember is the way to go. Uh, and with that, uh, that's mostly all I have. Uh, I wanted to thank Ryan Florence, who isn't here, but if you know him, he's a super smart guy, works for Instructure, and uh, he uh, triaged a bunch of late night IM conversations with me about Ember and got me started. Uh, so special thanks to him. <laughs>